Six minutes past six and UK tech firms are anxiously waiting to find out what government support they're going to get after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in the US. Nina has been looking at this for us this morning. So, Nina, not a name of a bank that lots of us might know, but actually really quite important. It's really important. Um, it's an American lender. It's massive in the US tech market, estimated that it supports around half of the tech market there. It collapsed on Friday. There was a hole in its finances and then lots of clients started pulling their money out. A run on the bank is a, is a phrase you might have heard of. Um, last night it was put into insolvency here. It's thought that around 200 tech firms, financial firms, bank with them, um, employing around 50,000 people. When it went into insolvency, they are automatically protected by an insurance scheme worth around £85,000. But many of them saying that's just not enough. They say without further support from the Chancellor, from the government, they will go into insolvency. Their employees are at risk, their contracts are at risk. And in fact, we heard overnight Etsy, the online delivery company, couldn't fulfil some of their orders and couldn't keep up with some of the payments. The government say they've been working round the clock and in fact the Prime Minister is in California at the moment and in the last few hours spoke from San Diego seeking to reassure those businesses and the wider market. Well, I understand the concern that people have got around what's going on with Silicon Valley Bank. That's why I've been working with the Chancellor all weekend and indeed on the plane flight over talking to the Bank of England and our regulators about finding the best solution. Uh, the government will have more to say on this very soon, but what I want to reassure people is that we will continue to support our well-beating tech sector and all the high-class jobs that, it's, uh, that it provides, but also that our financial system is resilient. It's slightly awkward timing for the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. It's just a couple of days before the budget and both of them in the past have sought to put tech firms, financial firms, at the heart of their vision for where our economy goes next. They've said they won't bail them out like the government has done in the past when banks have collapsed, but they're looking now to improve the cash flow. They'll be looking for somebody to take over. We understand the Bank of London is one of those contenders looking to be in the running. The wider issue is seeking to reassure the wider markets. What the Chancellor said yesterday is, look, this isn't like 2008. There won't be a chain reaction that we saw back then. But nonetheless, it will be interesting today to see how markets react. Whenever there's an element spooked in the market, there are often ripple effects globally. OK, Nina for now. Thank you very much indeed. Nina will stay across that for us. Hello, this is Breakfast with John Kay and Sally Nugent. Coming up to half past six on Monday morning and it's going to be a big week for the economy. The Chancellor is set to unveil his budget for the year ahead. That will be on Wednesday. Nina is braced. Are you, Nina? It's going to be a busy week for you. <laughs> yes. yes, I am. Yeah. I am. I do enjoy budget week, Good. rightly or wrongly. Um, so, Jeremy Hunt... Uh, Current, don't laugh at me. <laughs> it's true, she does. I know one has to. <laughs> um, the current Chancellor, so he had a rocky start, didn't he? His first job at the beginning was to steady the ship following September's disastrous mini-budget. Things have settled a little bit since then. Yeah, good morning. Some encouraging signs. The economy unexpectedly grew in January. The Bank of England revising its predictions of a downturn, saying it will be shorter and shallower than expected. The government's big target now, though, inflation, those runaway prices, they've pledged to halve them this year. Now, the failure of wages to keep pace with inflation has led to widespread strikes in the public and private sectors, as well as the Bank of England raising interest rates to 4%. That is their highest rate since 2008. There is a lot to juggle and we don't expect anything radical on tax cuts, for example. So where might we see changes? Well, energy bills are a huge concern for most households. And last year saw the energy price cap guarantee. So that was the amount an average household could pay for its gas and electricity bills being capped. The current plan is to increase that cap to £3,000 next month. Now, that's brought criticism from Labour, from charities and from energy companies. And they say the recent fall in the price of wholesale gas means the government should be able to afford to maintain the current levels of support of £2,500. Now, at the moment, we expect that will be confirmed on Wednesday. And the Treasury has also announced that from July, energy companies won't be allowed to charge extra to households on prepayment metres. We've heard a lot from you on that. What about petrol? Well, last year, prices at the pump went up significantly. And although over the last few months there have been some incremental drops, there's pressure on the Chancellor to resist the inflationary fuel duty rise that would see petrol prices go up again to about 12, by about 12 pence a litre in April.
Now, we've received a massive response when Hannah spoke last week about the spiralling cost of childcare on breakfast. Do we expect something from the Chancellor on that on Wednesday? It's thought at the moment that the average full-time nursery place for a child under two is £15,000 a year. Now, that means for some parents, it's actually cheaper to give up work than put their child in nursery. Well, the Chancellor says he does want to change that. The government's expected to pay childcare support to parents on universal credit up front instead of in arrears. Will there be something else in the budget, though? One thing that the Bank of England and others say has been hampering growth in the UK is high levels of people in long-term unemployment. So that focus on childcare is expected to be part of a wider package of measures designed to reverse a rise in economic activity since the covid pandemic so lots of jobs available not enough people to fill them and that would include changes to fitness to work tests for those with medical conditions uh, what usually happens now is later today possibly tomorrow we'll have some leaks uh, come out they usually like to save a rabbit in the hat to pull out for of a course. we weren't expecting that yeah. um, but don't expect anything too radical i think this is a conservative conservative government when it comes to the economy and things will be leaked incrementally but don't expect many big shocks and in the meantime, the Chancellor's trying to deal with this bank situation as well. So he's got a hugely busy week, hasn't he? Yeah, and this has come from nowhere. That's politics, isn't yeah. it? He's prepping for the budget and then there's an American bank collapses, massive ripples globally and hundreds of tech firms in the UK wondering what that means for us. So as he's putting the finer details of his budget together, he'll have to come up with a plan there too. OK, Nina, we'll keep across both those. See you again a bit later. Thank you. Now, in the last few minutes, a deal has just been announced to rescue the UK arm of Silicon Valley Bank. Nina's been looking at this for us this morning. Hi, Nina. Um, that just happened explain. quick. It did happen yeah. quick. Yeah, what, what, what's happened? Yeah, good morning. Um, it, Silicon Valley Bank is one of those banks maybe you didn't hear about until the weekend. It collapsed in the US, taking with it the money of around half the tech firms in the US market, actually, so massive over there. Overnight, the US government said that those firms will be protected by them. There was a knock-on for the UK market. They uh, banked around 200 tech firms in the UK banked with them. And they wrote to the government, they wrote to the Chancellor saying, look, this £85,000 insurance protection isn't enough. Our business is reliant entirely on this bank. So in the last five minutes, we've had um, a statement from the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. He said, this morning, the government and the Bank of England facilitated a private sale of Silicon Valley Bank UK to HSBC. He says deposits will be protected with no taxpayer support. Um, so what that means is the businesses reliant on that bank will be able to get their money back. Um, HSBC being the biggest bank in Europe, it's great news for those businesses. They will buy out, essentially, the UK arm of the bank, protecting those businesses. It's good news for the Chancellor. The last thing he wanted a couple of days ahead of the budget was ripples and concerns, the markets being spooked and worries around what comes next. What they can say now is this has been underwritten and we can all move forward forward. Whether or not that's true, whether people worry now that because interest rates have started to go up, some firms are starting to struggle a little bit, it's likely there will be concerns around that. But certainly in the last 10 minutes or so, this news of a deal with HSBC brokered by the government along with the Bank of England is good news for those firms and the 50,000 or so employees relying on them. And time before the markets open in an hour or so's time. Yeah. To settle yeah. the nerves. We wait and see. Yeah. Okay. Nina, thank you. Thanks. Now, in the last hour, a deal has been announced to rescue the UK arm of Silicon Valley Bank. Nina has been taking a look at this for us now. Nina, it, this is actually more significant than people might know, isn't it? Yeah, so this is the bank you might not have heard of and the crisis that nearly was but then wasn't, but it is significant nonetheless. It's an American bank. It's massive in the tech world over there and it collapsed on Friday. They found a big hole in their finances and then their customers started pulling the money out. Panic then ensued over the weekend in the UK. The thousands of firms reliant on it here. In the last hour, we learned that the government and the Bank of England brokered a deal with HSBC. They, HSBC, they will take on the UK arm. They paid a pound for it. But in their words, they say this acquisition makes excellent strategic sense. It enhances our ability to serve innovative and fast growing firms, including in the tech and life science sectors. This is a huge relief for the government. In the last hour, the Chancellor has said he rolled up his sleeves over the weekend to make sure a deal was done. And he told us this. All those really important companies that had deposits with Silicon Valley Bank UK 
can access their deposits, uh, can access normal banking services as of this morning. It's a very important outcome. No taxpayer's money has been used, and I think it's a result of a lot of hard work. But I also think it shows that the UK has uh, great resilience in its financial system, that we're able to step in with one of our biggest UK banks in a situation like this and protect a very important sector. So a really important moment for the Chancellor, partly because it's a couple of days ahead of the budget, so he needs to be able to focus on that, but also because he and the Prime Minister have presented tech as being a pivotal part of the future of UK economic growth. A concentrated collapse of firms in that sector would have been bigger than the sum of its parts. What does this say about banks more widely? Inevitably, there are at the moment those... Um, comparisons to 2008 and the ripples that came with that as well. Um, as things stand, the markets have stood firm, they've been resilient in the face of this spook, but it is a reminder that even as things start to settle following uh, the upsets around COVID and the invasion of Ukraine, something like incremental increases in interest rates can really shake some firms and then the ripples can be felt globally. Now, it's budget week and the Chancellor has got a lot to balance. Yes, so what can we expect to happen? on Wednesday. Nina's been looking at some of the big issues, the many big issues that he faces and joins us now. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Who would be that man at the moment? Mm. Lots on his plate before we hear from him um, Wednesday lunchtime. Uh, as he's knocking it into shape, the budget, let's take a look at what the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, is facing. Let's start then with inflation. In the year up to January, it was over 10%. And last year, you'll remember, inflation hit a 40-year high. Uh, the main aim of the government is to halve the rates of those runaway prices this year. Also, interest rates keep climbing. Uh, they've gone quite quickly from close to zero up to 4%. That's the highest they've been since 2008. And with government debt staying high, don't expect many tax cuts. So where might we see some changes? Well, energy bills are a huge concern for most households. We've talked about that for the past year or so. And last year saw the energy price guarantee capping the amount an average household pays for its gas and electricity bills. Now, the plan was to increase that cap, but that brought criticism from Labour and from charities pointing to the recent fall in the price of wholesale gas. They say the government should be able to afford now to maintain current levels of support at £2,500. Now, we do expect that to be confirmed on Wednesday. What about petrol? Another big talking point. Last year, prices at the pump went up significantly. And although the last few months have seen some drops, there is pressure on Mr Hunt to resist the inflationary fuel duty rise that would see petrol prices increase again by about 12 pence a litre come April. We had a huge response when we covered the spiralling costs of childcare on breakfast last week. Is the Chancellor set to announce anything on Wednesday? Well, it's estimated that the average full-time nursery place for a child under two is now £15,000 a year. That means for some parents it's cheaper to give up work than to pay for a nursery. Well, the Chancellor is expected to pay childcare support to parents on universal credit up front instead of in arrears. Perhaps some additional measures, though. There are relatively high levels of people in long-term unemployment at the moment, so there could be something else to tempt all parents back to work. As part of that, there's also been some suggestion of changes to fitness-to-work tests for those with medical conditions to get them back working. Some good news for the Chancellor. The economy actually grew in January, which was unexpected. That led to the Bank of England saying the economic downturn will be shorter and shallower than expected. Uh, but what we've learned in the last year, Sally and John, is that nothing is predictable. Inflation yeah. has come down slightly. That doesn't mean prices have come down. Mm. Disgruntled workers in the public sector and the private sector, it will be interesting to see which of those, if any, he can placate on Wednesday. And we have more strikes today, indeed. Uh, Nina, thank you very much.